Now, for my personal choice, all right. Sit back, everyone. I'm going to sell you on something. What if I told you Elvis didn't die? At least not the way you thought he did. No, the man who famously died on the toilet? That wasn't the real Elvis. That was just a body devil. The real Elvis is actually in a retirement home. And he's not the only celebrity. Yes, with him is a African-American man who claims to be JFK. But as they go through their everyday lives of wacky antics, all that changes someday when a mummy is reincarnated and crash is into the retirement home. But you're thinking some wrapped up mummy. No, this is a mummy wearing cowboy boots, a cowboy vest, and a cowboy hat. Oh, and by the way, Elvis is played by Bruce Campbell. Aww. Folks, have I sold you on this show yet? Yes! 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 I know, I still gotta see that one. It always was uh, in the back of my mind. I just have yet to get to it. I... It's i probably put it up there as one of Bruce Campbell's top five movies. Wow. I hadn't heard of it when you first told me the title, and I actually didn't want to look it up for myself. I wanted to wait for you to describe what this title was. And now that you know, do you want to check it out? We'll probably see some clips first. All right. Well, unless you guys got anything else to say, let's move on to Kiki's pick. All right, so my underappreciated movie, it's its one of those, it's so stupid, it's funny. I'm choosing uh, Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. It's a Steve Odekirk movie. They, they take these old martial art movies from, you know, China and all over. And I, I don't know what, I can't remember exactly what series they chose, but they edit their faces onto these people. And sometimes they recreate the scene and have act, you know, stand-ins that look, similar or have new characters it's like an odyssey kind of um like okay. he doesn't you don't, you don't travel far but he's on this big quest to find you know out th why he has the special talent and how he can use it for you know the best i will say it doesn't really like feel complete i guess but it, it's just a straight up comedy that just sounds interesting i'll definitely have to check it out oh yeah it's my my sister and I would sit around and quote this movie all the time. And that's all that's all I can say on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as in depth as you guys. Oh, uh, it's okay. Dave, you got anything, Dad? That, I've heard of that one. I, I've been mean to see it. Like I mean I know the title. Well, with that being said, why don't you go ahead and say yours? For my underappreciated movie, I'm going with this. It was from 2009, this thriller called A Perfect Getaway. It, it's about three couples vacationing in Hawaii. Among them, there's Timothy Oliphant, Mila Jovovich, a pre-Thor Chris Hemsworth, and oh, wow. uh, Marley Shelton, who I've seen in some of my favorite like later 90s, 2000s slashers, and Steve Zahn. And it's basically, the there's been a murder on an, one of the other islands of Hawaii, and they're they're trying to figure out who it is, and it deliberately throws a lot of red herrings at you to the point they directly have characters bring up the concept of red herring, and it does something I haven't seen another movie do, is that, like, once they tell you the answer, they, for a good 15 minutes, they flash back and just go into, like, the what the killers are really like and show you a bunch of different scenes with added context, and even though that's sounds like something that would really slow the pace down it actually adds a lot of depth and i'm glad it's there oh, nice i'm sold on just the actors alone holy crap yeah same here like which names were the ones to draw you in all of the ones you said <laughs> even steve's on oh so you know who marley shelton is okay not, not that one but up to steve's on <laughs> oh. sorry i'm sorry I know that name from something. She was in Valentine. She was in, I think, uh, 
uh, both parts of the Grindhouse movie. She was in Scream 4. Okay, okay, yeah. I just Googled her her in the face, was like, okay, yeah, I know who that is. She's like one of my favorite actresses who never really became a big name, but I really liked her acting chops, and I wish she could have been in more. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a film I'll definitely have to check out. So, with that being said, we're moving on to our final category, video games. Now... Since it's looking like we're all probably going to have to stay home for about the next two weeks, I tried thinking, what is a game that I can recommend to people that will take a good amount of time in order to fully explore and bite your teeth in? Well, folks, most of you have probably already played it, but I'm going to say it anyways. Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, I know, just about everyone has it, but have you explored in it? If you're just doing story missions or online, you are cheating yourself out of one of the most filled and vibrant worlds that I have ever seen in a video game. I've been playing this since it came out, and I'm still finding little secrets here and there that I question if anyone else has ever found. And... When you do get bored of exploring and want to check out the story mission, it's a really well-told old Western story, which really helps tie in to the original game. I will say, while the first game was very much a spaghetti Western, this one feels more like a Wild Bunch Jeremiah Johnson type uh, story. Yeah, that's a series I've always wanted to get into playing. I've never had the opportunity. But it always looks very, very fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I know that was like a Rockstar release, right? Yeah. And mostly I just watched Grand Theft Auto V multiplayer online, but I've heard nothing but glowing things about the Red Dead games. In my personal opinion, it's their best series that they do. I know that might be controversial just because everyone loves GTA, but... Didn't we learn in the last few months that Rockstar is kind of crappy to their employees? Unfortunately, yes. I was pretty disappointed to learn that both them and Naughty Dog aren't the greatest companies in the world to work for. But I will say for those employees, it's completely wrong what they were put through, but your hard works and effort completely shine through. Yes, there's definitely a lot of love. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm not too impatiently, patiently waiting for uh, Undead Nightmare 2, so come on, Mm -hmm. get to it. Or GTA (laughs) 6, it's been like seven years. I've actually heard the next game they're thinking of doing is Boldy 2, and that's one I thought was never getting a sequel. All right, I'm good if you want to take over, oh, Kiki. And the game I'm picking is a, a fairly new release, uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. Um, it's on Nintendo Switch. Um, it's also on Wii U, but that's a console that Nintendo fans don't talk about. Uh I mean, they basically ported every notable Wii U title to the Switch anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the exclusives for the Wii U. Um, this game is quite similar to what you're describing as Red Dead 2. Is you know, there's the storyline that you can follow, and it's that's great. But just going out, it's a, a free roam. Like you can go any, just about anywhere except the edges of the map. Like when when you reach the end of it, that's it. But there is so much, like, I've got almost 200 hours into this game, and I still haven't seen everything. That's the wonderful thing about open world games, is you can just explore forever and still find stuff new. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and there's all the little side quests that you find that you didn't even know were there. Because they, oh, man, and the way they have it spaced out, like, being such a big map, because it is pretty big for, I guess, a Nintendo game. Mm-hmm. Um... You don't ever feel like there's too big of a gap with nothing to do. 
either you're foraging, you're talking to people, you're doing a quest, or you're killing enemies, you're doing there's these uh, shrines uh, that help level up your stamina and your health, and there's just always something you're coming across. Nice. And the, and the art, and the, oh man, the music, it's the music, the soundtrack is very minimalistic. It's it's so like it's in the background, but it's still very iconic. And they've integrated like old themes in a very it's, it's very like classical because it's very piano heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is it's just a beautiful beautiful game. Unfortunately, I don't own a Wii. Uh, Wii U or a Switch, so I haven't had the chance to play it, but it's one of those games that as an owner as, of a different console, you just look at an envy. Like, man, I wish they could, I could play that right now. Um, the last Zelda game I played was probably A Link to the Past. Mm-hmm. It, it's like the one mainline Nintendo series that I never really got into, but I know it's very popular, and I it's been in Breath of the Wild, especially just was around the board loved from what I hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know a few Zelda fans who are just still singing its praise all the time. Oh yeah, I even follow a guy on Twitch. That's all he does. He does like these ridiculous speed runs with like ridiculous rules and it's always entertaining even though it's the same game over and over who's that uh point crow point crow yeah well he's shout out a... bro yeah no, he's currently doing a speed run um on his twitch i i didn't catch his last broadcast of it but um He's doing it where he can't touch the ground. Like there's this area called the Great Plateau where you start. He you can walk around in there, on the ground. But everywhere else, unless you're on a structure like a a tower or a man made thing, you just you have you have to get all the towers without touching the ground. The towers expose the map, and hmm. it's a lot of fun. Good deal. I mean, from what I hear about it, I'd like the idea of a game letting you go just st- straight to the final boss immediately if you wanted. Yes. I do love that concept. I do believe there is a game, uh, a video out there where someone, it might have been Point Crow or Small Ant one, um, they beat the, they, yeah, they went straight from, from beginning straight to the boss with a stick. They beat him with a stick. What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, they used the glitches to their advantage because of I mean, I haven't come across glitches myself, but if you overload the game, there are glitches, and they are hilarious, and they change different gameplay uh, abilities. Gotcha. Uh, speaking of speedruns, uh, Kiki, have you seen uh, that YouTube channel, Summoning Salt? No. Like, he does histories of video game speedruns, and it is, like, the most fascinating thing to learn about all the like glitches and exploits people have been able to come up with he has a 30 minute video on one individual track from mario kart 64 oh that's awesome like those aren't necessarily things that i watch all the time but seeing some of this stuff like i saw a video where somebody beat the original or not the original it was the second jack so Jack 2 in, like, six minutes. I guess there's a glitch very early on you can exploit. Uh, yeah, glitches are a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh! Um, the the one speedrun that I, I didn't get to partake in that Point Crow had done with Zelda Breath of the Wild mm-hmm. that I absolutely loved. He, I don't know how he had it set up, but he did it to where every... He would get five minutes to play on it himself, and then it would switch over. In the next five minutes, the Twitch chat on his channel controlled the game. Oh, nice. It was... I'll have to send you the link to that. It was amazing. And no, people are not being sponsored by Point Crow. It's just, if we find someone we like, we're going to give them a shout-out. Oh, yeah, I'm fangirling right now. Mm Mm-hmm. No worries. 
and he's actually pretty like he's very like family friendly i think so oh good deal my son enjoys watching this stuff okay i'll, I'll stop because i can go on and on <laughs> no worries <laughs> dave, dave you're on deck Okay, so I kind of cheated and I'm going with multiple picks because I couldn't just pick something I like, but something I know would take people a lot of time. Like, first, for something both old and new, the remake of CTR, Crash Team Racing, Nitro Field. Like, when the first trailer was unveiled and we thought it was just going to be a remake, direct remake of CTR, like the Insane Trilogy, but as more and more previews we just saw the sheer amount of content you could get for this like even though the actual story mode is only a few hours worth and you could beat it in the same time you do like the probably the original 1999 game like all the extra stuff that you need online for like i think because you can get there are so many individual character skins and every you like cart everybody can get their own cart and various paint jobs and stickers i think they literally said they did the math there's over a hundred thousand possible combinations you could choose from and the fact i I also admired they were willing to remake the tracks from crash nitro cards and and they brought in characters from post naughty dog era so they're this bringing in everything from the franchise they were looking at all out on this like and the original ctr it's better it holds up more than mario kart 64 fight me yeah i was actually going to say kind of a controversial opinion but i think the original ctr is the best uh go-kart game of the 90s i wish uh, i never got a chance to play the original ctr but i i have been contemplating getting the newer one and i did play crash (laughs) <laughs> it was probably it wasn't the first video game I played but it was the first one I got obsessed with mm-hmm. yes, like the I first see. one where if I kept losing I I bothered enough to like keep trying to learn what I did wrong like, mm-hmm. that was the first game I ever 100% completed oh wow I yeah. think my first 100% like in a game where it actually required a lot to do and not just play the main story. Was I remember 100%ing all the original Spyros. Oh, yeah. man. You know, I did it with the second and third one, but with the first one, there was one dragon. Which one? It's the one where you got a... You're in the castle, and you got a supercharge, like, down indirect, the hallway. A very indirect route. Yeah, it's like super indirect. And I knew the dragon was right up there. It's just pre-internet, you know, unless you had a games guide. Yeah. <laughs> I remember in Spyro 2, there was one orb that haunted me for years. Which one was it? It was in like the final homeworld, the winter tundra. I was on top of a waterfall. Okay, yeah. I, I had no idea where the fuck i was supposed to go i thought maybe i just had to like glide at a very odd angle but i remember when i actually discovered what you had to do it was my accident like i jumped off the side thinking i was about to lose a life but then i landed in water i was like wait there's a passage here like and then as i went forward i was like is this what i had to do this entire time <laughs> face palm and one of my favorite bits of trivia is that you, you've played You're the Dragon, right, Clancy? Yeah, I played the original three mm-hmm. and then got my heart broken with Dragonfly. But one thing that just, like, stuck out to me as a kid and evidently it did for a lot of other people was in the final homeworld of We Are the Dragon, why was there, like, just one island that seemed completely out of reach? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. And, like, we, it gradually turned out, like, the super bonus level was supposed to, like, the portal was supposed to be on the island, but they took it out and moved it somewhere for the before the final release. But for the, like, Reignite Trilogy, if you complete 100%, they add a secret whirlwind to take you there. Nice. The Reignite Trilogy was very good, by the way, for people who haven't played it yet. Actually, both it and the Crash remakes were 
superb. I still have and, to get those. And also, like, going back to s- some old stuff, like, even though one of these is about to get a remake, but the three Final Fantasies that were on the PlayStation 1, 7, 8, and 9, like, those were some of the first story-based games I ever got into as a kid, and it was just... The soundtracks were amazing. I liked how each game had completely different combat mechanics, and it was always the best feeling when you finally got the airship and could just fly over the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you play any of those? I played bits and pieces. Uh, at that point in my life, I was only getting, like, two new video games a year at most. Mm-hmm. So at the time, I was more into platformers, but I'm actually really looking forward to the remake as a way to get into the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't get to own any of them, but I definitely always wanted to. So, and also, I know 7 is, like, it is my favorite, and it's a lot of other people's favorite, too, but if I'm going to say a controversial Final Fantasy thing, I, I'd say 8 is the second best. In my opinion. Hmm. I've not heard that opinion before, but like I said, I'm not also not super into them, so we'll decide how controversial it is based on what the comment section does. If someone acknowledges this in a comment section, I'll be happy enough. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone good on their stuff? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so... Dave, let's have you do another tease. Okay, well, I can't quite tell you what it is just yet. It's a mystery. Dun, dun, dun. Well, folks, thank you for joining us on this special quarantined episode of One Shot Productions. As always, I've been Clancy. Kiki. And I've been Dave. And folks, we want to thank you for checking us out. You can find our stuff on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram or Twitter, and also we just started releasing on SoundCloud, so hope you check us out one of those places. Again, the name of the series is One Shot Reviews. And before we go, I just want to say, these are very trying times that we're all in right now. With the news, who's just seeming to get worse and worse every day, it's easy to feel hopeless. But keep in mind, you are not alone. And if you ever feel like you are, there's people you can call and talk to. I'm not saying this as a place of judgment or anything, because I've had to call this number multiple times. But if you ever need someone to talk to, the suicide prevention number is 1-800-273-8255. Again, 1-800-273-8255. Well, folks, that wraps it up for the show, but once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.